The Sons of the Forest just got released and it's already a huge success on Steam, which I am super happy about as I also really enjoyed the first title. The devs definitely deserve this as after a couple hours playing I can tell it's a lot of fun. Anyways, getting started with this game, or being new to the survival genre in the first place, it can all be pretty overwhelming, so in this video I'm gonna share everything you need to know to better prepare and survive your first days on the islands. From recommended difficulty, basic hunger management to the crafting system and unlocking new blueprints, this guide will have it all and spoiler free so you can settle down properly and be ready for the many epic adventures ahead, so let's get right to it. This is going to be the first of many guides for Sons of the Forest, so if you want to stay the loop with future videos, make sure to subscribe. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, but I'm going to include timestamps so you know exactly what to focus on. If you already know certain things, you can just skip to the rest, but if you're new to the game, I recommend you to see every single bit of it because there is a lot of information in this video. So let's begin. Alright, so it all begins with a new save file. I definitely recommend you to put this one on normal or hard, depending on your experience. But if you choose a new game, you should definitely check out the custom settings, as right here, the normal difficulty, you can actually turn on starvation and dehydration for the best experience. As I already said, no spoilers. While every time when you do start a new game in the forest, you will have this cutscene, which you can basically skip by press and holding the skip button, which is by default S, which allows you to instantly start on the island. What's also interesting to know is that you won't spawn at the very same location every single time. I actually spawn on two different locations, which you're gonna have to find out yourself, but here we start at the beach. The first thing you will see is your hut or overlay, which explains all the things you need to know to survive in Sounds of the Forest. The first one is your strength level, which increases over time if you perform heavy tasks. But then we also have hydration, food and energy levels. So make sure you drink and eat enough while you also have to rest every now and then. Keep all three to the maximum as much as possible because they also have an influence to your energy. The amount of swings you can do with an axe, for example, before you become exhausted. In the middle, we have a small mini-map, which shows us valuable information about our surroundings, while to the left, we have a red HP bar, which of course you want to keep up as much as possible to survive on the island. Right next to it, we have armor slots, which means you can equip armor to reduce the HP drain when taking damage, while very important, if you're playing with certain settings, you can also die because of dehydration and starvation. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, it is time to start our adventure. So the first thing you want to do if you land on the island is just loot all the containers which you find around you and just pick up everything inside as you can find some meds. Ooh, a target dummy. That's going to be nice for target practice. Anyways, once you've opened up all the containers, you want to interact with this guy. Kelvin, the AI assistant basically in the game, which helps you with all different types of tasks from fetching different types of materials to building shelter. You can give this guy all types of tasks which are going to come in very handy for your survival adventures. But the first one I definitely recommend you to use is follow me until you find a nice place to set up camp. So now that Kelvin is safe, we can open up our inventory and add items to the mat. Sweet, we've got some vodka as well. But um, let's open up the emergency pack first, as this one gives you some essential tools for survival. The first one is an axe to chop down trees, but also a GPS, lighter, and survival book with crafting instructions. We're just gonna right click every single one of them to get them back in our inventory. And now if we hold our mouse at the top right of the center, you can see the different recipes which we've unlocked based on the items which we've picked up. So once again, you wanna pick up everything you come across to unlock more blueprints. First one though is a crafted spear. So we're gonna have to add a utility knife. Then we're gonna go to the right side. We're gonna add a couple of sticks. And then the last thing which we're gonna have to add is some duct tape. So we're gonna right click this one as well. And then if we combine, then it will basically craft a spear, which is going to come in very handy. If we right click this one, it will be added to our inventory. While if you want to equip it, you actually have to visit this menu to left click for equip. 
If you want to quickly switch items, by the way, what you want to do is go to your backpack and then right click to add up items. So now they will all be attached to my backpack. I can always remove them if I want. But right now, if I quickly want to take a certain item, I just press and hold the inventory, click on my spear and there you have it. Anyways, let's open up our GPS, which we've just found. So this is where you can see the crash of our helicopter. And if we use the right keybind, we can zoom in and zoom out on the map. So you can see your surroundings. The green bleeps indicate points of interest you want to visit, as well as the purple exclamation marks. We're not going to talk about that just yet. First, we're going to find a nice place to set up camp, basically, to survive our first day in the game. As you can see, Kelvin is still following us and we just stumbled upon some different plants, which we can actually loot. It has a question mark. So if we press and hold it, we will actually eat these berries and then you can see if they're either healthy or not healthy. So for all the different consumables in the game, you kind of first have to eat it for yourself to see if they're actually harmful for your character. Definitely an interesting early game food source as it will hydrate and also reduce that hunger. You will find out pretty soon that you are not alone on the island. So right now we're actually getting stalked by a bunch of pretty creepy guys just constantly hiding in the bushes. But what I definitely recommend you to do at the beginning is to not be too offensive because these guys will remember your behavior. So if you're just being nice to them for a while, they're probably going to be less aggressive. While if you are super aggressive, well, you might make things more difficult than necessary in the beginning. We also just stumbled upon a cave system, which we can enter, but I recommend you to first find shelter, spend your first day primarily exploring the island, as you want to know what's around you. And even more important, once you decide to settle down, well, you're basically going to commit to this location. And since the map apparently is at least four times bigger than the previous game, boy, oh boy, it's going to take a lot of time to basically get from A to B on the island. So being somewhere central is definitely going to be recommended. Right here, we've got a beautiful lake area. If we face towards the mountain, probably one of the biggest ones out there. But I think this smaller water source is going to be even more interesting to settle down. As right here, we are a little bit more remote and we can find plenty of food. We've got deer, we've got trout swimming in the water. Anyways, it's getting dark. So I'm going to open up my inventory. When it's dark, by the way, you can toggle on and off your light on your inventory. You can also change the light color right here, which I think is pretty cool. But Let's stick with white for now. Take out our X and just get rid of some of the plants right here. Also going to take out my lighter with L. But now we're going to pick up some sticks. And the next thing you want to do is open up your inventory once again. And we're going to left click to equip them. Then if you look at the floor, you have different options. If you right click, you can basically put them in the ground, which you can use to make fences. Well, if we right click and see those broken sticks, we can basically left click, break sticks, and then we can use the lighter to make a little campfire. Voila! And we just made another friend. But the final thing we're going to need right now is some food and shelter. So what we're going to do is take out our tarp, equip this one with the left mouse button, and we're just going to place it somewhere where we want to sleep for the night. So I think this is going to be just perfect. We're going to left click to throw it on the floor and then you basically want to search for the two arrows up because that's where you're going to bring it up. So voila, right now we've got our little shelter. This one can be used to both save your progress, which we're going to do right now, but also to sleep. So right now it's 630 day one. And if we press and hold the sleep button, we will skip the night. Voila, look at that. Right now it's 730 in the morning so we can start our next day. Once again, make sure to pick up as many items as possible so you can unlock new blueprints. But since we've already crafted the spear, we can actually use this one to hunt for our first food. And one of the best food sources early game is probably fishing and maybe also some turtle meat. So you can basically crouch up on them, stab them a couple times and then take the meat. This is why you want to stay close to a fresh water source as you can collect both the meat and you can see that there are plenty more swimming around here. But you can also drink to stay hydrated. One of the most important things to do as right now you can see that our energy bar goes up again. While I also want to find some fishies. So we're going to take out my spear once again. You can see that if we're swimming and just walking up on the fish, they will be scared. So what you want to do instead is basically crouch in the water. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to spot them. But as you can 
can see right now they are not getting scared. So we can just jab and take him off our spear with one click. While if we press and hold this, we can actually eat the fish. And this is probably your best food source early game as it gets rid of that hunger so fast. While it will also restore a nice amount of HP when you eat the fish. You don't have to worry about raw meat too much either as you can just left click this one in your inventory and eat it as well. And you want to make sure you do so before it spoils as if you have it in your inventory for too long it will basically rot and then it's not going to be very tasty anymore. And very important save your mats for later. These can be taken if you want to quickly restore your HP so only take this in extreme situations where you're out of food or seriously have to heal up as quick as possible. Now, two more things before I end the video. Make sure you put your buddy to work as much as possible. You can also let him do the fishing for you, so you don't have to do that. While I definitely recommend you to tell him to get locks and drop them right here when you're at least settling down and want to make a nicer camp than this little tarp. As you can see, he just started chopping down trees, but he was thirsty. So that basically means he will take care of those needs himself. He's also eating some berries right here. But after that, he will get to work. Kelvin is a big man. He is capable to take care of himself. So that's a good thing. Get rid of all the smaller trees around your campsite, as it will be easier to spot your surroundings, all the creatures that walk past and possibly also enemies you want to avoid or deal with. If you chop down trees, very important, they will always fall to where you're looking at. So first chop down the other side of the tree and then face towards where you want it to fall down. So it's going to cost you a lot less time, energy and frustration to collect the logs afterwards. In my next video, we're going to go more in depth about the building, but, but let me show you some basics. So if you open up your survival guide, which for me is B, you can see all the different things you can craft. For example, you can reinforce your campfire if you put rocks around it. So if you walk up to it and then just take out a couple of stones, you can hoover over it and then left click to fill the areas and voila, there you have it. While a foundation for your base is also a lot easier than you might have thought. You can pick up to two locks, by the way, and then when you rotate it, now we can just left click to throw it down right there. And then we're going to search for the arrow to place a second one. We're going to do that four times so we have a square. Well, right now we want to take out our X and then half some of these locks by just standing at the right position. You're going to do that a couple times to make some of these half planks of which you can pick up four in total and then left click every time when you see the arrows and see it is that easy. We're going to need one more and this basically makes a foundation. We're going to go more in depth about the building in a video which you will be able to find in the top right of the screen. But one more thing, if you switch the modes right here, you can actually toggle types of buildings which you can instantly craft with blueprints. For example, right here we've got a drying rack. This one is going to come in very handy to dry our food early game. So all you have to do is interact with it to place the sticks from your inventory. But now we can hunt for creatures. If something is on the floor, by the way, you want to press and hold to do a smash attack. And then we can just hang whatever food which we've collected. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's everything you need to know to survive your first day and night in Sounds of the Forest. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like. Very much appreciated as it helps out the channel. Of course, let me know in the comments down below if you have more questions. I'm very happy to answer them. I'm going to make plenty more videos for the game. So stay tuned for more by subscribing right now, though. I want to wish you an awesome day. Big thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Till next time. Peace.